Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm afraid you've got me this evening, as Sashi is indisposed, but is with us online. Um, could I have any apologies for absence, please? Okay, we've had apologies from Councillor Rataram, Councillor Chapman, um, Councillor Wise, um, and Councillor Mal Vaganham. Councillor Mal Vaganham is joining us virtually, um, and Councillor Bethan is substituting for Councillor Rise, and we, Councillor Rebecca Jennings Evans is joining us virtually as well. Thank you. Um, minutes of the previous meeting to receive and confirm as being a correct record the minutes of the performance and finance scrutiny meeting held on the 25th of January 2023. Anybody have any comments or are you happy for me to sign them? All okay? Take that as a yes then. Okay. Item three, declarations of interest. Does any member have any declarations of interest? I believe um, Councillor Rebecca Jennings Evans does. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can't hear you online. <laughs> but I'm imagining you've got to the declarations of interest and I need to declare an interest that my daughter is in receipt of one of the free accesses as an elite athlete to places leisure, which is something that the borough um, supports. But obviously I'm not directly in receipt, but she is. Uh, uh, can I interrupt you? Uh, Rebecca, I, I, we, I can hear you. I'm online. But can you hear me? I can hear you, Valerie. Okay, it's, it's you, Rebecca, that's got the problem. Right, I will fiddle with the system and hopefully it'll, it'll work. Okay. Anybody else have any de 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 <laughs> declarations of interest? No. Okay, item four, um, executive portfolio holder update. I am going to, um, as, as chairman, I'm going to ask that this is restricted to 20 minutes. And if you want to finish before that, then that is fine, but I don't intend going over 20 minutes if we can help it. So I'd like to introduce Councillor Sarah Jane Croke, who is a portfolio holder for safeguarding and support. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think it will last 20 minutes. I'm going to keep it brief because obviously you've all had the update in the papers anyway. What I wanted to outline is some of you might not know all of what this portfolio covers. And I have to say it's one of the, the comprehensive ones. And Councillor Whitcroft, if we thought we were busy in our mayoral year, I'm probably three times busier with this. So just to give everyone the heads up on how much work goes on behind the scenes, scenes, behind the scenes with all the officers and the teams, they are incredible and um, we are so lucky to have them. So obviously it covers community safety, corporate safeguarding, disability facility grants, housing advice and homelessness, rough sleeping, emergency accommodation, equalities and diversity, family support, the United Kingdom Resettlement Scheme, Afghan Relocation Assistance, Homes for the Ukraine Scheme, Asylum Seekers, the Home Solutions Team, Clearance and Hoarders, Public Health Funerals, Housing Register and Allocation of Social Housing, Floating Housing Support, the Voluntary Sector and um, Community Partnerships, which obviously covers the Grant Scheme, Revenue Grants, Ward Councillor Grants, Surrey Heath Lottery, and also the Community Support Working Group, and we now have Coronation Grants. So that is just a list of what is covered in the portfolio. Um, so going through community safety, um, in October 22, the Council introduced a driving improvement campaign, which focuses on improving key aspects of life in Surrey Heath. Um, the council have been engaging with the local people and from feedback, working hard to ensure that the communication strategy is clearly recording any complaints 
and we sought to, whenever possible, work with our partners, such as Surrey Police and Accent, to tackle antisocial behaviour and fly tipping across the borough. Um, we've improved information on how to report the mechanisms on the council website for the antisocial behaviour and fly tipping. Um, we had joint day of action with Accent in February 23, where the council's corporate enforcement team visited known hotspots to provide information to Accent residents. This is going to be an ongoing thing um, and will continue. Um, a joint day of action with Surrey Police, uh, again with uh, the council's corporate enforcement team where we're patrolling and looking for unauthorized waste carriers and scrap metal um, and also at the council's external partnership select group meeting in february the focus on the meeting concentrated as you're well aware on antisocial behavior so just to put out there what antisocial behavior is again a lot of people we're not sure on what was classed as anti-social behaviour. So I think as councillors, that came across very well and it helps us with our residents. Um, obviously, we cover corporate safeguarding. Again, that is in the report. Um, going on to disabled facility grants, um, the Home Solutions team um, deliver the council's mandatory discretionary grants programme. Um, this has been a great improvement. I'm just, I've got another bit of paper, so we'll go back to this. Um, we have had an increase on this, um, going up to 38% because we had a bit of a backlog with the pandemic, but we've now moved on, which is fantastic. So I'd like to thank the team for that. And I know we had a few issues which we've um, covered and now moving forward have got a lot of new things in place and doing extremely well there. Um, moving on to housing, advice and homelessness. So again, just to go over some figures, between um, January 22 and the 31st of December 22, we received 832 approaches from households whose housing situation was likely to lead to homelessness without intervention or were who, who were already homeless at the time they sought help. This was an increase of 37% from 2021, which also saw an increase of 25% from 2020. From these approaches, 178 households were either threatened with homelessness or actually homeless at the time they approached. This is an increase from 14% from 2021 and is part due to the ban of evictions being lifted, which is coupled with the constriction in the private renting sector. An increased number of evictions and lack of affordable private rented housing is likely to see an increase in demand in residents seeking assistance from the council. So again, we're all well aware of the current economic climate and we're, we're trying to do the best that we can and try to help people come forward before they get into a situation that they cannot get out of and things escalate. So we're doing a lot more signposting. Obviously, we're, citizens' advice have been heavily involved as well. Um, so it is just making people aware that there is help there and to come to us and talk. And I know that is happening. So again, thank you to the amazing team that we've got that deal with all of that. Um, moving on to rough sleeping and emergency accommodation. Um, we had in 2022 uh, nine rough sleepers. That was an increase from the five that were recorded last year. We haven't got the exact reason why. Um, but we are aware that the rough sleepers in the, some, of the, some in the borough did not originate from Surrey Heath. I know myself from reaching out to some of the homeless people that they are coming into our borough from other districts because of the support that we've got in our borough, which is a testament, again, to what we're giving out um, with the Hope Hub, again, with citizens' advice, um, 
So nine is not a huge amount, but we want to keep it down. But hopefully we're in control and people are getting help that they need. So again, thank you to the amazing team. Um, we also managed to get um, a government rough sleeping initiative of funding for 200,000, which I know Clive behind me was, played a big part in that, so thank you. Um, and that will help support with um, the support worker we've got based at the council now who supports the residents in Connaught Court. Um, also the joint funding with Surrey Heath CCG for a mental health worker, which is based at the Hope Hub now. Um, revenue funding, which will help to support setting up the emergency accommodation service for the Hope Hub for the rough sleepers. Funding for joint work with Accent and Transform to set out a housing-led housing -led scheme. And funding to employ a single homeless floating support worker within the housing support team. And I cannot say how much we do need support workers are out there with these people just to make sure, again, they are accessing the help they need. There is a lot more mental health issues out there at the moment and these support workers are needed. Um, we also have, which um, has come in quite recently, uh, working with Homeless Link, which is a national homelessness charity, and they've been commissioned to review the services that are given to rough sleepers and single homeless residents in Surrey Heath, just to make sure that the services that we do have are working effectively. Oh. Um, and if we have any gaps in the provision, this report will come back in April 23, I believe. So obviously that is also being looked at, which is good that another charity is looking to make sure we're covering everything that we need to. Um, equalities and diversity. Um, we have been working extremely well looking at things for the future. So we're looking at doing a calendar of events and dates going forward. So we'll be recognising more national days um, and covering also um, other faith forums, which again, I think need to be looked at and celebrated. And of course, we had our Pride event as well last year, which was a huge success. Um, that again is ongoing work and will continue going in into May with the new council. Moving on to family support. Um, Emily, I believe, is online. Um, again, I've worked with this team and they are fantastic. Um, the work that they do behind the scenes, if you look at the KPIs that they were given and you see what they've actually achieved, it's fantastic. Um, this family support team have also been running um, the resettlement scheme. We know a lot about, obviously, the Homes for the Ukraine. That has been an incredible experience, um, and I've been part of that, in the heart of that, which has been close to my, I keep saying the heart, so there we go, close to my heart. Um, People may ask about the Homes for the Ukraine going forward. Um, the teams are working extremely closely with the families. Um, some families are coming to the end of their sponsorship. Um, these families will either continue in with another new sponsorship. A few of them have left the area. A few of them have gone back to the Ukraine. Um, some have now gone into private renting. Uh, they're working. Um, incredible people, full of life and energy and feisty, and they don't want to rely on anybody. They want to continue and do things for themselves, and that is what we're helping to support. Um, and again, I can't thank the team enough for everything that they've done. Um, I'm going to go on, let me look. 
I don't really want to go through every single point, otherwise I will be over 20 minutes. Um, probably one thing people aren't aware of is the public health funerals. I don't know if anyone is aware of that. So that is when, um, unfortunately, someone passes and there is no next of kin or they're not sure of where those people are. So the team look into all of that. And I believe we had, and I've got to pull this back up. Um, I think it was nine. I must admit to that. I think it was nine that we had um, that the team helped organise. So that is with uh, the funeral, the estate, um, which again is probably quite a heartbreaking thing to have to do because they have to go into the home. Um, the housing register and allocation of social housing, um, again, is quite self-explanatory. Floating housing support, uh, we've had 64 referrals for families and individuals that needed help um, to maintain the independence in the community. Um, and that was an increase of 52%, but again, that support is there. Um, most of those referrals come from the, the housing solution team, um, and it is for families that need support there. Uh, registered social landlords, we are all aware of a certain housing association, which I won't go too much into. Um, what I will say, even though there seems to be um, quite a lot going out in the community, the communication that we've now got with this housing association is a lot better. Uh, we have a dedicated email now that goes straight to them. Things have improved slightly. Um, the legacy has now come down to 250, the jobs that were outstanding. Um, first time fix is at 90%. The voids have come down, not hugely, but they've come down. They were, I think, around 75 or 76. They're now down to 53. Uh, we're going to try and push for more on that because, again, the less voids we have, the more housing we've got for the people in need. Um, the outstanding work still going, which does include some of their legacies, is 1,305, which I'm not happy with, and constantly on it daily. And if you saw the emails that I get daily, yeah, there we go. So that is doing the best we can with the powers that we have. Um, voluntary sector and community partnerships. Um, obviously we've had um, at the executive we did the grant, the grant schemes the revenue grants um, the ward councillor grants have been ticking over um, and I believe we have let's have a look uh, da, 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 37 projects that went through and that was at 16,299, and then we've got a further 13 pending applications for ward councillor grants. Um, the Surrey Heath Lottery, again, is doing extremely well. Since, it, since its launch, it's generated 85,000, which has gone to local good causes, which, again, I think is something to celebrate. Um, Community Support Working Group, again, we have been uh, collaborating and we have now recruited a dedicated local area coordinator, which is for the Old Dean and St. Michael's, and that is going very well. Uh, the funding for this was provided by Surrey County Council. Um, and there's also funding that's been made available for Community Larder which will be introduced in St. Martin's. Um, and also there they will be doing outreach work, which will be with citizens advice. So we're getting that out into the community, again, where people need it. And I think I will leave it there. The coronation grants are relatively new and obviously ongoing. And that's me. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Yes, that was less than 20 minutes. That's very good. Thank you. Um, thank you for a comprehensive report. As you say, it is a large portfolio. And um, as I have to agree with you, you do have an amazing team behind you. And the work that gets done has to be applauded. So now, um, if we can restrict questions as well to less than 20 minutes, it would be good. Edward Hawkins. Thank you, Chairman. Um, looking at the table on page 17 of your RSLs, you've got there a category independent living. Now, I get that those are homes, flats, etc., but we're getting more buildings coming in that have independent living, sheltered homes, but they're not self-contained flats. They may be um, suites or within the bigger envelope. How do we monitor those? Do we monitor those? Or is that something that's work in progress? I shall ask for some help on this one. Um, the, the shelter, these are independent living are all with housing associations and they're what were called sheltered housing. They're all self-contained. Um, so we haven't got any housing associations bringing through any of the units you're mentioning. They're all in the kind of private sector. Well, yes, it's part of it, but I mean, they may be on the private sector, but I mean, again, is there a safety net or is there a mechanism that we are monitoring those or we're dealing with complaints or because some of the people may be quite vulnerable, they're elderly, they're in the private sector. Okay, but they still possibly need support and help. Is there a mechanism for helping them? They may not need it, but I mean, is there a mechanism there? So, uh, just to say that, that that would probably be picked up by adult social care because people who needed care packages and if there was any borough council service that they needed, we'd likely to get the referrals that way. And also, I'll just come back on it because we've got quite a lot of the voluntary organisations that do organise things in some of these retirement apartment places as well, one of them being Surrey Heath Age Concerns. So if there are any issues, a lot of it can be picked up and brought to our attention that way as well. Thank you. Any more questions? Councillor Noble. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, firstly, congratulations to Councillor Croke and the team. Um, of officers, so I think you've done sterling work during the year. Um, I've got a question on the Homes for Ukraine scheme. Um, I'm seeing on social media um, res uh, families that have come to the UK from Ukraine coming to the end of their six months and saying that they're having to find their own accommodation because they're not being assisted. I've just wondered, is that a miscommunication error and, and what what advice should we be giving or what, what messages should should we be sending out to, to address that? So if I can just check, Councillor Noble, the, the question is in relation to the, the six-month arrangement uh, and what we're doing to try and support that and ensure that that... That's that correct. I've, I've seen a couple of posts today on Facebook from Ukrainian um, families that are in the, in the area who are coming to the end of their six months and have said that they're not being supported to find, or they've been told they've got to find their own accommodation without help. Um, I, I'd be very grateful if you can share those. Uh, I don't believe that is the case. So we have, um, Emily Bauer leads our Home for Ukraine team. Um, we have quite an extensive number of officers, including an engagement officer who works with um, our Ukrainian guests to make sure that where their tenure is coming to an end with their existing host, we either relink them with a new host or we find them alternative accommodation. Um, I think, as Councillor Croke said, sometimes finding accommodation is challenging, whether that be private rented or through some of our registered providers, but we do our very best to try and link them with appropriate properties wherever possible. Thank you for that reassurance, and I will catch up with you on this. Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, again, I'd just like to reiterate my thanks to Sarah and to the wider team behind um, and also, um, thank you very much, Sarah, for coming this evening. Um, it's nice to see one of the portfolio holders actually come and represent the portfolio that they're responsible for. Um, just one point to raise. The, the issuing of the grants for the coronation grants, 
was very late getting up. Um, and in fact, I've had um, a number of residents come back to me and say that they were really frustrated by the process and couldn't get any information. I have checked myself this evening and it is working just fine. But I suppose really it's just a reminder that we, before we put out pre-coms, we need to make sure that we're going to meet the dates that we originally publish um, because it certainly caused some frustrations. But thank you. Just briefly on that note, I um, had the pleasure of um, dining with the Rotary last night who are taking on board the um, arranging for this. They've had, let's describe it as a large interest, to say the least, um, and they have a team of three who are working on it and very, very hands-on, um, full of confidence uh, because obviously it's a somewhat unique situation for them. Um, so, yeah, it, it, from what they're saying, it's going very well. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Right, thank you, Councillor Croke, for your time. And um, you'll see, I think they're remaining for the next portfolio as well, aren't they? So, thank you. Right, item five, um, executive portfolio for leisure, culture and community, Councillor Rebecca Jennings-Evans. Can you hear us? Good. I can indeed. Okay, same goes for you. 20 minutes for your presentation and um, over to you. Uh, I'm planning on my, on my presentation being a little shorter, but um, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee, officers and guests. Thank you for having me this evening and allowing me to share my portfolio with you. This year has seen an expansion to my leisure and community portfolio to include culture, which has seen the theatre and heritage service teams being included in what is now the leisure, culture and community portfolio. You have before you a comprehensive report repair, prepared by my team that covers information such as key areas of responsibility, activities, events and performance over the last 12 months, and also references future work activities within the portfolio. You will see that a number of my team have joined us this evening, including the Leisure Centre Manager, Duncan Mackay, Glendale's Contract Manager, Tom Gregory, our Senior Contract Manager, Pete Leemore, and Darren Williams, Head of Community Services at Runnymede Borough Council, along with officers from SHBC, all of whom I'd like to personally thank for being here tonight to help answer any questions that you may have for the team. So without further ado, I'd like to open up to questions from the floor, please. Any questions? Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I'm sorry, I'm not, if it's just me that's struggling to hear you, but you're very quiet. Yeah, which I know, I, I'm equally as surprised. <laughs> Um, it, it was just really commenting through on uh, some of the events, and it was lovely to see events being held in, for example, um, private locations like the Windlesham Field of Remembrance uh, last year. I'm very disappointed to see that none of those events in the park seem to include um, the more rural elements of the borough, and I hope that that's a misprint in the document, document or something omitted as opposed to a change in policy. Um, because having um, felt as though we were making some progress and having a single Surrey Heath, um, I would say that that is definitely a backward step. And I wonder if, um, to begin with, if the portfolio holder uh, would like to comment on that. By all means, absolutely. Can you hear me better now? Perfect. I could hear uh, you fine before. It was actually Councillor White that was quiet. Ah, thank you. OK, so absolutely, there's no change in policy. Uh, I think you'll find that where, where the more rural areas are covered is under the, the theatre section, because obviously we do theatre in the park. And as you'll well, well know, we had performances last year in um, Chobham Recreation Ground. Um, and you can find that information if I flick through. Sorry, Councillor Jennings, I did check, and I, I believe that Lightwater is still in there, but there's nothing in Windlesham or Chobham when I read it. If I've misread it or I've missed an area, then I apologise. Um, but actually, yep. it, it was a it was a downstep to what we've seen previously. No, as far as I'm aware, we are we are still doing that. 
It was in the supplementary document that um, I was reading it. It's in the main. It's, it's in the main report. Yeah, but on. So two point nine for me is on page. Hang on, twenty four. Yeah, that's what they ran. It's not what they're planning to run. And what they're planning to run in, in the supplementary paper doesn't seem to include those areas. So I'm appreciative, as I said, I'm pleased to see that we've been included in the past, but we seem to have been forgotten again in the future. No, we are still planning on continuing to do those activities. In fact, growing, we're, we're planning to focus on growing our audience within the rural communities, in, the, in particular with the theatres in the park. Well, the supplementary paper excludes the rural um, locations. So if, if, if we could look at that, please, and if somebody could come back to me, I would be very By grateful. all means. Thank you. But, and, and, by all means. Any more questions? I have one then, as many people don't mind. Um, to do with the open spaces in the park area, and I think you would be well aware of what I'm going to ask, um, either your officers or yourself can answer this, is um, the Whitmore Road play area, which is um, attached to Curly Park Rangers, and the Fremantle Road play area in Bagshot. Both of them are... <sighs> Fremantle Road is managed by the Parish Council, but is owned by... Heathrow Council, and we have been asking if something can be put in place to ma ma match funding for refurbishment or changing of the play equipment there. And we'd like an answer as a parish council as well. Sorry, I'm borough, I know, but um, if we can go forward with this. And also the other one, I st believe there's still an argument as to the ownership of the land and whether the work is going to take place. It is now an absolute disgrace and an embarrassment to the borough. So I would like answers on both of those. I don't need them now, but I would like something in writing soon. Uh, I can actually update you. Um, the Fremantle Road playground came to the capital uh, project to the 22nd of February uh, full council meeting and was agreed um, and the parish clerk has been informed that that funding is available. So with regards to Whitmore Road, unfortunately, we still are in a, a situation where the land transfer has not yet been secured. It has meant that thanks to Damien and other lead officers, we are still in correspondence, still trying to um, chivy Surrey County Council along to engage with us uh, with regards to getting this sorted because you're right it's it's a real shame that this facility has been left to go to the state that it has but we will continue to push for this land transfer to happen. Okay thank you. Uh, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you Chair. Um, my other one uh, relates to Himalayan balsam and the treatment of Himalayan balsam um, we have an area of Sangs, which has prolific and increasing amount of Him Himalayan balsam. And we have basically, it's spreading along the Bourne. It started at one side of the village. It's now right the way through to the other side of the village. And it impacts not county land in this case, but Sangs land, private land, and land that is owned um, by, oh, mine's gone blank as to who is it's responsible for the, for the waterways. Um, so that Environmental is, agency. Thank you. So those are the three owners of the land. Um, having chased this through for a number of years and over a prolonged period, um, originally um, I reported it at the wrong time. Um, I then reminded them at the wrong time because having reported it at the wrong time, I was told they'd do it at the right time. And when it didn't happen at the right time and I reminded them it was already the wrong time. So I wondered if it was possible, please, to share with me the planned work um, cross agency boundary to deal with the issue of the invasive Himalayan balsam um, right the way across the Bourne and now spreading out um, into wider areas. I'd be very grateful for that. Thank you. Yes, we can come back to you on, on that. That's not a problem. I can ask the team to do that. Um, and of course, we, we, you know that we're in communication with the, the Environment Agency on the issues that, that sang. Thank you. Uh, if we could possibly have it in time, that would be great. 
you. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Rebecca Jennings Evans, and um, hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Item six. Can you hear me now, Victoria? Pardon? Um, item six, climate change working group update. I believe that, oh, Sharon, you're going to do the update. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. So I recall bringing the motion uh, to council in 2019 and having a very, very prolonged debate. Um, I note you didn't say I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm assuming you've curtailed everyone else so that I could just babble on, which is marvellous. Thanks it's for that. It's not actually a portfolio Herald Commission report. So, so I can do what um, I like. Great. <laughs> you can have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Should, shouldn't have asked, should I? <laughs> anyway, without too much hot air, I would like to, um, you know, I knew that I'd really raised the bar in bringing that motion, and I'd really like to thank all the officers who have been involved in the meantime. Um, in moving us forward as far as they have. Um, I'll mention some by name in particular. So Kieran Bartlett and Jane Reeves, who mm. really set the ball rolling, created some fantastic foundation, really strong foundation, as well as the basis for this climate action plan. Um, Anna Godelman, who was our first climate change officer, who came in, upped the game again with um, sort of really putting plans in, in place, looking at strategies, um, and, and setting out a really strong agenda. And then more recently, Cameron Dent has also now got his feet under the table and is really moving things forward. All of this has been, well, most of this has been overseen by Nick Stevens, who has given very proactive leadership. And we also have really strong support from our CEO, Damian Roberts. So again, thank you to everybody, however, who has um, been part of this. So this is the second time that the Climate Change Action Plan has come to PNF. Um, as I'm sure hopefully you're all aware now, it is a colour-coded plan. There are some suggestions for changes this year, um, and those have been highlighted in yellow down the left-hand side um, so that you can see more clearly what, what is actually sort of being suggested where actions are being closed or amalgamated with others. This is in order really to um, rationalise the plan. We're not sort of dropping things for the sake of it, that's for sure, um, nor are we evading any of the, of the um, actions that need to be taken. But in total, we've had seven actions that have been completed, 35 have been started and are continuing, 14 actions at the moment are still pending, and it suggested that nine actions are closed, which you can see in the report. Um, we have also put them in uh, assigned priority, and in among our high priority actions, 87% of those have already been started. So we re really are making good progress. Um, over the last year, the key achievements really have been in securing a government grant of 151,000 in order to install electric vehicle infrastructure into our car parks. And we're also working alongside Surrey County Council's commitment, which is to install 10,000 chargers, but that's over the whole of Surrey County Council, obviously not just in our borough. Um, we've been able to plant more than 5,000 new trees, thanks to the green team. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we have a tree strategy, which has kind of bounced back and forth a bit. It's been branching out, should I say. Um, but that will be coming back fairly soon um, for signing off. We've also developed an energy strategy, which is currently also going through the executive sign-off process. So an awful lot has been happening. Energy audits um, have been completed at Surrey Heath House and Cambly Theatre. We originally were looking at Knoll Road Car Park um, and the shopping centre for various projects, but because of other things that are going to be going on there, those are slightly on a back burner. Obviously not burning gas. Um, 
so over the next year, the proposed key actions will be creating um, actions around cross decarbonisation plans around major buildings, accelerating the rollout of LED lights, relaunching of the staff climate network. Now, this was the training that several members of staff undertook when Anna was in position. Um, so that's going to be relaunched and disseminated further. And there will also be climate change training for councillors as well at fairly soon in the future. Um, we wish to assess the potential to install even more EV charging facilities within the multi-storey car parks. And also we are beginning the electric electrification of the council-owned fleet. So Meals on Wheels has started and we are uh, a community transport vehicles and we're also um, talking to Amy, etc., about what they can do regarding their vehicles. So I hope that gives you a, a kind of summary of, of what we're doing and open to questions. Okay, thank you, Councillor Balliford. I'd just like to say a lot, an awful lot of work's been put into this since you first put this forward and I, I think that most people are content with the work that has been done. So I'd just like to personally thank everybody involved in it. Somebody on the back row put their hand up first. Uh, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you. I just, I just wondered whether we were linked, and I noticed that part of the carbon offset plan for the theatre was the planting of trees, but it said the planting of trees in the UK as opposed to the planting of trees um, within Surrey Heath. And I just wondered if it would help our planting of trees if our carbon offset for the theatre related purely to Surrey Heath and not to the wider UK. Um, or again, I just wonder if that's sort of more of a bit of a, a typo within that document or whether in fact we do look to offset that carbon, um, carbon reduction plan within the confines of the borough and if that, how that links into the climate working group because it seems to me like a very easy win if we're all, all already justifying things in that way. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely agree. I wonder if I could pass that over to Sue, if she doesn't mind. Thank you. No pro <coughs> excuse me, no problem. Um, it's a national scheme <coughs> that the theatre has entered into, so we don't have control over the, the planting locations, which is why it is referred to as national. It's certainly something I can ask the team to look into, though, to see if we can have a more localised or know where the trees are exactly planted. So leave that with me. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hawking. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, at the same council meeting where Sharon put forward the motion, I also put one and I stepped back. And I'm very glad I did, actually, because firstly, under Morgan and, and Sharon, they've um, been driven far further than I would have thought possible and I would have been able to do myself. And I think uh, credit is to both of the... Uh, them as, as chairman. In uh, own sweet way, the planning committee, we've also taken on board um, a uh, pressing for electric charging points um, on all new developments, if only so we don't get too many lectures. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, but those will know where I'm coming from. And uh, we're also seeing integrated commercial buildings. Um, and uh, I'm working with the county. So I'm glad to see there's a bit of joined up thinking carrying all, all around. And I think it's credit due to, to both the, uh, the chairman um, of this, and uh, I look forward to watching progress in the future. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Cameron, I notice you're on there. Have you got anything to add? Because I'd hate you to have wasted your evening and <laughs> not make a comment. Sorry, I think you cut out a bit slightly, but I'm happy and available to comment if needed. Any more questions? Anybody? Okay, your recommendation is that the Performance and Finance Scrutiny Committee is advised to note the Climate Change Action Plan update report and obviously to make any observations which we've already had. So, everyone agree? Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here for that item. I, item 7, quarter 3, October to December 22, finance update. Which one of you fine gentlemen are going to take this item? Councillor I think Perry. it's me, Madam Chairman. 
Uh, these uh, reports have been around for some time. They've been before the executive, uh, but uh, I'll go over the main uh, summary of, of those results here. So this is a Q3 report, nine months through the financial year, ending 31st December 22. As members will have seen from the paper, the working budget for the whole year, when it was set at the beginning of the year, uh, was 14.926 million. The actual result for the first nine months was 10.585 million. This is obviously a significant fall on the average running rate originally expected. Uh, full details of the actual numbers all provided in the report. At the half-year stage, the year-end forecast was an overspend of 300,000. Uh, the forecast now is an underspend of 117,000. Given the increasing impact uh, of inflation, this is a very good result, I believe. The Star Chamber exercise and the very positive attitude of the whole borough team have really helped in a very difficult situation. The report is also a good indicator that the planned savings and improvement included in next year's budget have a good foundation. But happy to answer any questions on this. Do we have any questions? No? No, no nothing. Okay, a recommendation is that the committee is advised to resolve that they for one, note the spend against the approved and capital programme for the period 1st of April. Is that the right one? It's the revenue budget. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the capital one. The capital one is the spend that one. The spend that one. Okay. There you go. It's just a little one. Okay. Um, note the spend against the approved capital programme for the period 1st of April to the 31st of December. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, capital budget update. Which one of you are going to do that? Councillor Perry again. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this report details the capital spend via the, uh, the annual capital budget for the financial year 22-23 at the Q3 stage, 31st December 22. It also details the 7.853 million of capital projects that were originally in the budget for this year that have been reprofiled into later years, subject to the approval of the Executive and Council. The revised capital budget after the repiling exercise became 2.802 million. As at the end of Q3, the actual spend and firm commitments amounted to 1.945 million, in other words, 69.41% uh, of the revised budget. Forecast out term for the full year now is uh, 2.431 million against the full year revised budget of 2.802 million, which is 86.8%. Detailed breakdown of all the capital spend uh, form part of the report. Uh, members should also note that the report and the reprofiling of the detailed projects will be submitted to the executive for approval at their meeting on the 30th of May. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Okay, I'm on the right page now. You know, stop clock's always right place to start. Committee is advised to resolve that they note to spend against the approved capital programme for the period of 1st of April to the 31st of December 22 and note the proposed reprofiling of budgets to later years that executive will be asked to approve at the meeting of the 30th of May, as we have just said. Everyone agreed with that. Thank you. Right, item eight, um, the work program. Um, I don't think this is really within our remit, but um, I think when the elections are over, then the portfolio holder will be fitted into that at, 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 yeah, 
and I understand that, that the end of year revenue and capital reports would be will be slipped through September just to fit better with getting new accounts sorted. Any comments on that? Okay. All right, well, that's the end of the meeting. So I would just like to thank everybody. And this is the last meeting of the Performance and Finance Committee. It's a shame that Toshi isn't here, but I'd like to thank him for chairing the meetings over the last year and allowing me to chair a couple of them over the last year. And um, wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you.